Ah, yes. Contemporary. Uh, one book in particular, uh, a very great book, and I'm very glad you bring it up, Brian, uh, a book called Blood Meridian, which I write about at some length at one point in this book. Uh, many of McCarthy's novels are remarkable, including All the Pretty Horses, the first volume of the Border Trilogy. I, I don't think the second and third volumes are quite as fine. And some of his earlier novels, like Satri, though very Faulknerian, somewhat derivative, are still remarkable books. But he has written one masterpiece, uh, which I would say is I mean, of contemporary American fiction, of fiction written by human beings still alive and among us. I would list Philip Roth's Sabbath Theater and American Pastoral. I would list Don DeLillo's Underworld. I would certainly list Thomas Pynchon's The Crying of Lot 49 and Gravity's Rainbow and his recent and magnificent Mason and Dixon. But if I had to vote for one novel by a living American, it would be Blood Meridian, which is a fearsome story and a terrible parable, and which I think has a deep implicit warning for current American society. I mean, our gun crazy country, uh, where Charlton Heston appears endlessly on television and amazes me. Uh, he angrily says, President Clinton, why do you talk of 22 children shot here or there, and you don't talk about the, the tens, the perhaps hundreds of millions of dollars that the NRA is spending to educate young people how to properly handle guns? I cannot believe the madness of what I am hearing. But it is all straight out of Blood Meridian, because Blood Meridian is the ultimate Western. Uh, it is a historically, closely based account of a terrifying uh, scalping expedition organized by Mexican and Texan authorities in 1849-50 to simply wipe out all of the Southwestern uh, Native Americans in order to clear the way to the gold fields. And the Glanton Gang, an extraordinary group of free Buddhists or filibusters, have with them as their spiritual leader a frightening manifestation, a Melvillian, a kind of human Moby Dick, Judge Holden, who is a vast albino fellow as round as I am, but seven foot tall, and who has all languages, all knowledges, and who preaches endlessly the theology of violence and war and who is still alive and dancing and fiddling and proclaiming that he will never die at the end of the book. And indeed, he has never died. He, he is responsible for those horrible posses we have out there in Idaho. He is responsible for those people who blew up the federal building. He is responsible for these mad people who break into schools and shoot children. Um, there is... we. We are a country that has had a kind of perpetual ongoing religious revival since the year 1800, and simultaneously we have been completely gun crazy for the last two centuries. And in some sense, that's what McCarthy's great book is about. How many times have you read Blood Meridian? Oh, I teach it steadily in a course called How to Read and Why, so I must have read it by now since I reread everything I really care for. 20 or 30 times, probably I have it memorized by now. But it's fascinating to me that you ask that, Brian, because the first two times that I read it, I could not read it. And I admit this to my students, and I admit that in this book. I broke down, I don't know what, after 15 or 20 pages the first time, and after 70 or 80 pages the second, because the sheer carnage of it, though it is intensely stylized, is nevertheless overwhelming. It's, 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 it's shocking. It's, uh, it's horrifying. And uh, it takes a very strong stomach, but if you break through it, if you, if you read your way into the cosmos of the book, then you are rewarded. You get an extraordinary landscape. You get an extraordinary visionary intensity of personality and character. You get a great vision, a frightening vision of what is indeed something very deeply embedded in the American spirit, in the American psyche. And uh, the more you read the book, I find the more you will be able to read the book. It is uh, it's as close, I think, to being the American prose epic as one can find. Uh, 
more perhaps even than Faulkner, though there are individual books by Faulkner like As I Lay Dying, which are perhaps of even higher aesthetic quality and originality than uh, Blood Meridian. But I think you would have to go back to Moby Dick for an American epic that uh, fully compares to Blood Meridian. When you read, do you make notes? No, no, I have, uh, that too was inherited, no doubt. I have a scandalous memory. Uh, I remember what I read. Indeed, if it is poetry, and if I fall in love with it, if it seems to me inevitably phrased, then I simply remember it and hold on to it uh, forever. And indeed, in this book, I urge memorization. I must be the last professor of literature in the United States who occasionally will say to a very good class for next week, read Tennyson's Ulysses. Don't learn it by rote, but read it out loud when you're alone with yourself. Read it again and again. Brood on what it means. Possess it by memory. And come in and, you know, as we talk about it to one another, let us recite it to one another. And indeed, tonight, uh, at the Mumford Room, uh, I intend to uh, recite Tennyson's Ulysses and to talk about it, partly to read what I have to say about it in the book. Memorizing went out of fashion in American education because it had been brutalized. It had been debased into just repetition by rote. But I think it is not only a legitimate but a crucial mode of teaching, and always has been in all the great religious uh, traditions um, and the great secular traditions of humanistic learning also. I would go even a little further. You cannot think, you cannot be cognitively acute without memory. Remembering is absolutely essential to thinking. And if you don't read and read deeply, and if you don't possess, whether you memorize it or not, if you don't powerfully and deeply possess very strong works of literature and thought indeed, then you will impoverish your thinking. And if we impoverish our thinking, if it becomes any more adulterated than it has already in the last third of a century, then I would fear for what is, after all, most precious about this country. We, we defend individual rights, as the recent vote of the Supreme Court 72 on Miranda shows. We, we care passionately about them. They are built into our Constitution. But I would fear for the political future of democracy in this large and varied country if we really do stop reading deeply and holding on to what we read, if we stop reading the best that has been written, because then I think we will not think as clearly or as well, and we will be subject to demagoguery. I find it powerfully offensive that one of the two major presidential candidates is perhaps the least distinguished graduate in the entire history of Yale University, and I've taught there for 46 years, though I never taught this gentleman. But he has boasted to the press, at least until his people told him to talk differently about it, but he began by boasting to the press that he had never read a book through since he left Yale, and indeed he laughed he hadn't read many through there. And of course, I believe him, and I see columns, or I see uh, very dubious historians like Mr. Michael Beschloss, uh, another instance of the media, proclaiming that it doesn't matter whether presidents read or not, I think it matters a great deal. Uh, if you want to see an instance of American cultural and political decline, think that the last time we had a father and a son be presidents of the United States, it was no less than John Adams and John Quincy Adams. And I read them both at length. I have read what they have written, including their letters. Uh, they were men of enormous intellect and humane culture. Uh, obviously, the father-son combination, whom we may well make our next uh, father and son presidential duo, are a long way from John Adams and John Quincy Adams. That, I think, is not a matter to uh, scoff about or utter placebos about. I think that is a terrible instance of cultural loss. 